Well, new scary legislation in the U.S. Snoop on all your stuff. Find out today on Lab Rats. This episode of Lab Rats is brought to you by Jack Threads. Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name's Andy Walker. I'm John Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify all things about spying on you and stealing your stuff and making you afraid. That's our specialty? Well, I'm a bit that worried. That is today. Now, now we, we cover technology and uh, there is a new piece of legislation going through the processes in America that's scaring a lot of people. I think there's some legislation in Canada that's uh, scaring a lot of people too, potentially. Yeah, it's called CISPA, or the Cyber Intelligence. Uh, <laughs> that's the one in the States. <laughs> yeah, it is. A cy- yeah, in, in Canada, it's called B- uh, Bill C30, but uh, in the US, it's called the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Uh, short, short form is CISPA. CISPA. So that sounds like a CISPUMBA. Yeah, lots of uh, you know, people scared of it, lots of people supporting it. It's very controversial, so we thought we'd demystify it today. Primarily because we had a, a friend who came into the, uh, into the studio on our 300th episode and said, hey guys, what's the, the whole CISPA thing going on? So yeah. we'll, uh, we should probably have a look at his question after the break. Sure, but first, a message from our sponsor. This episode of Lab Rats is brought to you by Jack Threads. You know, only suckers pay full price. Now, if you're looking for alternative threads like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but hate wasting all of your cash on them, then listen up. You can score these premium brands at up to 80% off every day. There's a new invite-only shopping club just for guys called Jack Threads. That's the club, not the guys. And it's serving up street, skate, and surfer brands at prices that are going to melt your brain. There's a wait list, but forget that. Go to jackthreads.com rats right now to get the instant killer hookups. Go now! Did we mention that it's free to join? Head over to jackthreads.com slash rats and you can start saving right now without even having to leave the house. Hi, my name is Jordan and I'd like to know the Lab Rats opinion on CISPA down in the States, the uh, Cyber Intelligent Protection Sharing Act, which means that if the US government suspects you of anything, they can demand that people like Google or Facebook or even World of Warcraft give them all of your account information. And I'd also like to know if there are any similar laws coming up in Canada. Thank you so much, Jordan. It's a very weighty topic, and I understand you've done a bit of research. So I'm I'm still a little bit lost on this because it's very complicated. It's very exciting. I spent hours and hours going through legal briefs to bring you this episode. Did you uh, get our lawyer involved in this? No, but I am having a hard time pronouncing the whole title of the thing in the first place. Okay, you've got that down though now. Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, CISPA. Okay, so... CISPA. So what does that actually mean? So this is legislation that's kind of going through uh, the U.S. uh, legislative process right now. It just Mm -hmm. came out of the House of Representatives and was cleared by them. Mm -hmm. Essentially what it does is it's it's designed to thwart cyber threats, cyber attacks, and that sort of thing by accessing uh, online personal data from Mm -hmm. companies in the aid of uh, investigations. Okay. Right? So the idea is that the government can go to, say, Facebook or to Intel or to Microsoft and say, give me, give me information on Sean Carruthers because we think he's a bad guy. So possibly they think I might want to, to blow up your house or something like that. So they'll look at what I posted to YouTube. Yeah, to, to YouTube, uh, any personal information yeah. you've posted publicly, any information they might have. Now you imagine with a case like, like Facebook or any internet, internet site for that matter, they've got an enormous amount of personal information, probably more so than you probably know out there if wow. you in- integrate with this, these kinds of services. Well, of course, there's always tons and tons of information that uh, most people don't know. Just by being there and coming from certain IPs, they'll know pretty much which block you live on, uh, not just uh, the fact that you've logged in. That's right, exactly, exactly. So, here, so, here, so, so twofold here. One, the government can go to a company and say, give me the data. Mm-hmm. But a company who self-identifies, who says, I am trying to thwart cyber, a cyber, we'll have a cyber defense process, or I'm trying to stop an attack or some sort of situation, they can actually uh, go and, and deal with information themselves, uh, access that information, and share it with other companies too. And it absolves them largely of liability. Okay. That's the scary part of this, right? And the companies actually love it. Unlike SOPA, which was all about you know, uh, um, privacy and, and on a personal level, right? This is, the companies came out against that and the public came out together. Microsoft, uh, uh, you know, Facebook, 
Intel, a Verizon, a bunch of companies are saying, you know what, it's actually not a bad thing. And the reason is, is it absorbs them of liability when they go out, when they move these, this data around, in the cause of, the greater cause of security. Yeah, and I guess the, with SOPA, I think people were looking at that largely as a, since a stop online piracy act, it was all about putting things on YouTube, and that's literally the main focus of it, and people got really ticked off about that. And, uh, but I guess this sort of addresses something a bit wider, or is it sort of the same thing rewrapped? Well, there's two real concerns about this right now, the way that the legislation stands. One is something called the notwithstanding clause, right? And the notwithstanding clause, let me just fire it up here, because I can actually read to you, it says, notwithstanding any other provision of law, a certified entity receiving cyber threat intelligence pursuant to this subsection shall not further disclose such intelligence to another entity other than to certify an entity or other and blah, 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 it goes on. I know, it's yawning, right? Here's the important piece of it, notwithstanding. Notwithstanding means forget all the other privacy protections, the other legislations, right, that protects your privacy. Forget about that. This supersedes it. Okay. So strike number one. Strike number two, right? It's vague on what I can ask for, what the government can ask for. There's okay. no real definition around you can ask for this but not this. Okay. Right? So, because in, in the past, if you wanted this information, you would actually have to go to a judge and get a warrant and ask for very specific things and prove that you needed it. Correct. Right. So now Facebook can go to Intel and say, here, we have an issue with this guy. Here's all his personal information. You know, here's his pictures. And then they're not held liable for anything that happens yeah. because yeah. of that. Yeah, exactly. If they, if they wrongly accuse you, too bad for you. Right? That's the problem with this. I right? don't think I like this. It's vague and it supersedes all of the protections. Now, that said, there are, um, you know, it's, it's in the pro it has to go through a three-pronged process. Clear the House of Representatives happened in April 2012, right? Okay. It's headed to the Senate next. So, it, so it'll have to go through that process as well, and there'll be, you know, for and against and all the rest of it. And hopefully it'll be refined somewhat. Any major objections will be dealt with there. So then after that, it goes to the president. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the good news about this. Barack Obama says, I am, have some great concerns about the definition of what privacy information is. Right? I am very concerned about that, and I will, I will veto this unless that gets handled. So right now, there's a concern that, uh, you know, that this, this won't be dealt with, but because of the due process, it's likely you know, some, some things are going to come up. At least the president is looking out for the American public at this point, mm -hmm. which is good, right? Um, so we have to hope, people that are against this, that it goes through uh, the Senate at the very least. If, if it passes the Senate, that it does so before he has the ability to veto it. That's right. Because then who knows what, uh, if Barack Obama doesn't get in in November, what the other person, I guess, is probably Mitt Romney at this point, what his position is going to be on this. That's right, exactly, exactly. So, uh, so you know, there is hope in the sense that it will be held res likely responsible. It's being very, it's very, very visible. You know, there are companies that are for it, which means there's not as much opposition. You know, the, um, there's a bunch of high-profile internet people that have come out against it. You know, the mm -hmm. Electro Frontier Foundation has yeah. fundamental problems with it. Yes, yeah, so they would, you know, of course. Tim uh, Berners-Lee, the inventor of, of the web, has, has stated his concerns about it. Mozilla has come out and said there's a problem with this and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But the big problem that we're having right now in general is there's not enough noise and online momentum to actually uh, to stop this. Google, interestingly enough, yeah. though, hasn't actually had, doesn't have a policy. They haven't said, we're with, they said, we're studying this right now. Right. And we don't have a position on it. And Google is uh, really weird on their policies on, on or their, their stances on some of these things. I, I really don't know where they lie anymore in the, the evil good spectrum. Right. They could fall on either side of this at this point. Yeah, they could. Absolutely. In the end, I think it's going to be to their advantage. Hmm. They're a company that collects a lot of information. There's no liability in, in playing with that information for okay. a company, at least not in the way that, the, it, that their legislation is currently built. So um, if you want to learn more about this, you can zip on over. There's a cryptome.org has the full legislation. We'll, we'll put that in our show notes, uh, or you just can go to this URL on the screen here. Um, there's a really good link over at Times World News, um, and I'll just flip that up here. It, you know, what, what is it and why should we oppose it? Right. It's, a, it's largely against it. And then here's another really good one, talks a bit about more the companies, you know, who supports and opposes it and why. Right? So if you want to get informed on this thing, then you want to check out those three links. And we'll, if we have anything else, we'll, we'll post those as well. And I would suspect that if you oppose it, it would be uh, probably in your interest to make a donation to a company like the Electronic Fr Frontier Foundation. That's right. Because they'll do everything they can to fight things that they consider intrusive. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I will mention that uh, not only is, you know, now, you know, obviously the U.S. is a big concern. Here in Canada, and I know other uh, Western nations are looking at similar legislations. 
Yeah, I think right. they have something going on on this in Britain as well at the moment. That's too. right, exactly. But here's the thing is if the U.S. lets it pass, you know, the likelihood is we're, the rest of us are going to follow. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they set the terms of how people interact with the Internet for the most part. Exactly. In state, so. So, so in your country, you want to find out what's going on with CISPA and whether or not uh, you need to make a noise about that as well. Um, so there yeah, you go, CISPA in a nutshell. I'm scared. Good, a you little should be. bit scared. You should be. You should be. All right. So basically now they can find out that I'm sharing things that they don't like, potentially, even if they're completely innocuous and put me in jail. Yeah. Well, anything you have, in, in, any data you have on you. What if I shared the beebs on your uh, Facebook wall? It's up to you, buddy. Will I go to jail for that? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'll send you to jail. All right, well, that's it for, uh, for this, this week. If you have a question about things like CISPA, we're the demystification experts. You know? So if you have a question about technology and want us to do an episode on it, you can email us at... Don't email us unless you want to go to jail at labrass.tv. <laughs> Don't listen to him. You can uh, send a more simple uh, email address. At Feedback at labrass.tv. But you still might go to jail. <laughs> no, they won't. Be nice to them. They love you. Yeah, you won't go to jail. No, that's right. Exactly. Email us and he'll go to jail. That's right. Yeah, that, clearly. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for tuning this week and pushing play. You know, it would be foolish for us to be here. Sissing it up with CISPA. If you guys went out there going, oh, my, I don't want to go to jail and I don't want to take Sean Carruthers with me and make him my girlfriend in jail. You always make this so much fun at the end. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for us. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Rev3. Lab rats 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 Rev3. Are you on? There's actually four cameras. You gotta talk to that one. I did, but it's it's not rolling. Love it. Okay, so